right, so in this video we're now going to um, make use of the trigonometric ratios that we introduced in the previous um, lesson. So um, in this first video we're going to focus on finding unknown side lengths in right angled triangles using the trig ratios. Okay, so essentially um, the first thing to do, actually the first thing to do is to determine that you have a right angled triangle. If the triangle is not right angled, Sokotoa is completely irrelevant. Sine, cosine and tangent um, in the form that we currently understand them is completely irrelevant. Later on in this topic we will have a look at ways that sine, cosine and tangent can be useful in non right angled triangles but Sokotoa, sine being opposite over hypotenuse, cos being opposite over adjacent and tan being opposite, sorry, cos being opposite over adjacent over hypotenuse and tan being opposite over adjacent are only relevant in right angled triangles. So if you don't have a right angled triangle, stop right there. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is identify that. Then the next thing you want to do is look at the information that you've got in that triangle and determine whether you need to use sine, cosine or tangent. Okay, and then you want to substitute your information in to the relationship that we know about sine, cos or tan um, and then focus on solving for the unknown value. Okay, so the first example here um, we are going to find the value of the pronumeral and give answers to two decimal places where we need to do that. So where the answer is not an exact answer, we'll give it to two decimal places. Okay, so part A, um, we have three bits of information, well, two bits of information and one unknown. So we're trying to form a relationship between three quantities, okay? Given that this is our um, angle of reference, that makes this the opposite side and this the hypotenuse. Okay, and so therefore, if we've got opposite and hypotenuse, we're going to need so sine. We know that sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so then we put the information from this particular question in to that relationship. So sine of 30 degrees is equal to x over 6. Now it's an equation that we're trying to solve for x. Okay, I want to be really clear about the fact that sine of 30 degrees is just a number, okay? If you can solve the equation that is any old number, 7 equals x over 6, then you can solve this equation with sine 30 in it. It's no different. One, a number equals x divided by another number. So um, there's no new solving technique happening here. We want to get x on its own. x is currently being divided by 6, so we're going to multiply both sides by 6. So we're going to get 6 times sine of 30 degrees. So in my case, I'm going to do 6 times, use my trig button, sine of 30, ah, now my case is in radian mode, because I've been doing some work with my E12 class, so I need to fix that first. So um, tapping on the battery, we talked about this in the previous video, document settings will make the angle mode degree. Okay, so going again, so 6 times sine of 30, now let's be clear that we're not actually solving an equation here. We've already done the solving by hand. We've already got x on its own. That's what it means to solve. So we're not using menu 3.1 here. We're not using solve. We're simply just working out what is 6 times 30 degrees equal to. So we don't, we don't need to solve to do that. Um, and I pressed control enter, but actually this is a nice exact answer. So in this case, x is going to be 3 centimetres. Okay, let's have a look at b. So again, let's look at the quantities we've got. We've got these three quantities. Well, one of them's unknown, but they're the quantities we need to form the relationship with. If 55 degrees is our reference angle, then that makes this the adjacent side and this the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse, ka, cos. Okay, so we know that cos of theta is adjacent, oops, sorry, is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So putting the information from this particular question into that relationship, cos of 55 degrees is equal to adjacent, which is 3, over hypotenuse, which is y. Okay, so slightly more complicated equation to solve here. Again, cos of 55 is just a number, okay? So essentially, if we can solve the equation 7 equals 3 divided by y, um, then we should be able to solve this equation. So this is a bit more complicated um, in that the first thing we need to deal with is getting the y out of the denominator of the fraction. So I'm just going to focus on this number equation first. I would multiply y, both, multiply both sides by y, so I get 7y divided by 3, and then divide both sides by 7 to get y on its own. So same sort of strategy needs to apply here. 
we want to get rid of the fraction first by multiplying both sides by y. So we're going to get y times cos of 55 degrees is equal to 3. And now we want to get y on its own by dividing by this number here, which is cos of 55. So y is equal to 3 divided by cos of 55 degrees. Okay, let's type that into our calculator. So control divide for a fraction template, or you could just use divide 3 divided by cos of 55. Control enter for a decimal. Um, the question tells me two decimal places. So um, this is approximately equal to, so I use my squiggly line because I've rounded off, 5 point, my squiggly equal, sorry, because I've rounded off, that means approximately equal to 5.23 and the units here are centimetres. Okay, let's have a look at some problems where we need to construct the triangle ourselves first. Um, a 10 metre ladder leans against a wall, making an angle of 60 degrees with the ground. How far up the wall to the nearest centimetre is the top of the ladder? Okay, now there probably should be a couple of other clarifying words in here just to be very clear about what happen what's happening. It should really say that this is a vertical wall and the ground is horizontal. Okay, we are going to make that assumption here and I think in most math problems we can safely assume that that is what is intended unless we're told that the wall is crooked. Um, but we really do need to know that to know that we've got that right angle so we've got a right angle triangle. So we've got the wall, the wall happening here and we've got the ground. And then we've got a ladder leaning up against the wall. Now what do we know? A 10 metre ladder. So the length of the ladder is 10 metres. It makes an angle of 60 degrees with the ground. So the angle between the ladder and the ground, this angle in here, angle in here is 60 degrees. How far up the wall to the nearest centimetre is the top of the ladder? Okay, so this is the distance that we're trying to find here. Okay, so essentially it's a right angled triangle um, and we've got again our unknown side length we're trying to find. This is our angle we're going to need to use and we're also going to need to use this length. So if 60 degrees is our angle that we're in, we know about, um, then that makes x the opposite side and it makes 10 meters the hypotenuse. So again, we're going to be dealing with sine just like we did in part A above. Okay, so we're going to have sine of 60 degrees is equal to opposite, which is x, over hypotenuse, which is 10. And so x is going to be equal to 10 times sine of 60 degrees. And then I'm going to put that in my calculator. Uh, 10 times sine of 60, control enter for a decimal. Um, now, it asks us for the answer to the nearest centimetre. So these units are all in metres. Okay, So this answer here is 8.660254, etc. metres. Okay. Now, asking, being asked to give the answer to the nearest centimetre does not mean you have to give your answer in centimetres. You can still give your answer in metres, but you have to give enough decimal points that it is accurate to the nearest centimetre. So, for example, if I just wrote 8.7 metres here, that is 8 metres and 70 centimetres. So, I've actually rounded off a bit prematurely, okay, because it's not actually 70 centimetres, is it? We could be more precise than that to the nearest centre centimetre. So I'm going to write 8.66 metres, which is equivalent to 8 metres and 66 centimetres. And so therefore it's correct to the nearest centimetre. You can say 866 centimetres, um, but that's not what the question's explicitly asking you for. It's just asking you to round to the right level of accuracy so that you have the answer correct to the nearest centimetre. So 8.66 metres or 866 centimetres is the answer to the question here. Okay, example three, find the values of x and y in the diagram opposite. Okay, so here we've got two different right angled triangles. We don't have three right angled triangles because we don't actually know about the, well actually we could work out what the angle is up here and it's not 90 degrees. If we've got 42 degrees here and 52 degrees here, there's 92 degrees there, which would make this 88 degrees up the top here. So the whole triangle, the big triangle around the edge is not a right angled triangle. So we cannot use trigonometry in that larger triangle. Okay, so I'm going to highlight in two different colours the two right angled triangles that we're going to need to think about here. So that's a right angle in there and we know that because we've got this right angle over here and together they form a straight line, so it's 180 degrees. 
and then we've got this right angle triangle over here. Okay, so we're going to need to utilize those two right angle triangles. <clears throat> Now in the green triangle, we've already got two bits of information. We've got this angle of 50 degrees and this length of 12 centimetres. So that means we should be able to find the third bit of information, Y, using in the green triangle. In the orange triangle, we actually only have one piece of information, the 42 degree angle. And so therefore, we need to use the green triangle first to calculate the value of Y. And then once we've got that value of Y, we should be able to move over to the orange triangle and find the value of X. Okay, so let's focus first of all on the green triangle. So 50 degrees is my angle of reference. That makes Y the opposite side and 12 the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent means we need tan. Okay, so tan of 50 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is Y, over the adjacent side, which is 12. And so Y is going to be 12 times tan of 50 degrees. We can type that into our calculator, 12 times tan of 50 degrees. Give your answers correct to one decimal place. Oh, control enter with my CAS. So 14.3, have we got units here? Centimetres, yes. Okay, so Y is approximately 14.3 centimetres. Now let's focus on the orange triangle. So in the orange triangle, Y is now the opposite side. Well, still the opposite side, but opposite 42 degrees. And X is the hypotenuse. So this time we've got opposite and hypotenuse. So we're going to need to use sine. Sine of 42 degrees is going to be equal to opposite, which is Y, over hypotenuse, which is X. Okay. And so that means I'm solving for X this time. We know what Y is. We're going to put that in in a second, but I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, we want to solve for X. So the first issue is that X is in the denominator of the fraction. So x times sine of 42 degrees equals y. And so x is y divided by sine of 42 degrees. Now, I could use 14.3, but 14.3 was an approximate rounded answer. So instead, I'm going to use this nice exact way of thinking about um, y. 12 times tan of 50 degrees divided by sine of 42 degrees. All right, and so then I can put that into my calculator. Now, I could type that in, but I sh I've already already typed in that numerator. I've got that up here. That's this number here. So using it nice and exactly in my CAS by scrolling up and pressing Enter, I want to do that value divided by sine of 42 degrees. Control Enter to get that as a decimal. And so X is 21 point, and we're doing one decimal place, so that is 21.4 centimetres. So we've got our values of um, y, 14.3 centimetres, and x, 21.4 centimetres. So thinking about that, being able to use previous answers exactly, if we had used that rounded 14.3 answer, let me see if that would have an impact in this particular question. Sometimes it won't, but it's a risk that you're not prepared to run. So in this instance, if we'd used rounded 14.3, we also would have got 21.4. But I can assure you that in many other examples, using a rounded answer in subsequent calculations would create a compounded rounding error. So you always want to use previous exact answers. And there's no reason for not doing that in your CAS. It's very easy to scroll up and use the last answer that you found nice and accurately in your next calculation. Okay, number four. Find the value of x in the diagram opposite. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. Now again, we have to remember that we can only use Sokotoa in right-angled triangles. So whilst it might be very interesting to be able to think about using this triangle here, it's not right-angled, so it's completely useless to us. Okay, so instead, let's focus on the two right-angled triangles that we do have. We've got this orange triangle here. And we've got the larger green triangle. Okay, so what they both have in common is this vertical side. So I might actually call that something. I might call that H for height. Let's draw them out as two separate triangles and see what we've got. So we've got the orange triangle, where this is a 43 degree angle right angle, this is 18, and this is H. So there's enough information in there for us to find what H is. 
Okay, and then we can focus on the green triangle, which is x plus 18 along the bottom, 35 degrees here, and h here. So let's use the orange triangle first to find h, and then we can go across and use that value in our second triangle to find x. Okay, so in the orange triangle, h is the opposite side, and 18 is the adjacent side, so we need to use tan. Tan of 43 degrees is opposite over adjacent, and so h is going to be 18 times tan of 43 degrees. Now, we don't technically need that as a decimal because it's not an answer that we're being asked to give. If you're interested and you want to get some sense of how big it is, that's fine, but we could just use that nice exact statement in our next calculation. Um, so it's about 16.79, uh, uh, what are the units, metres? Okay, so then in the green triangle, um, in the green triangle we have, again, it's tan, opposite and, and adjacent, sorry. So tan of 35 degrees is equal to h over x plus 18. Now you could just call that y or something else, find y and then work out x after that, but I'm going to leave it rather than introducing another variable here. It's the same thing. Okay, so let's again get the get rid of the fractions. So let's first write x plus 18 divided by tan of 35. Now let's be clear that if you didn't write brackets around x plus 18, it wouldn't be correct. Okay, and so x plus 18 is h divided by tan of 35 degrees. Perhaps let's work out what that is, because we know what h is. We can put our value of h in over here. Okay, this is h. Okay, I'm just going to move this over slightly. So we've got x plus 18 is, uh, we can either write that exact expression in, or we can write our 16.79, but we're going to use it more exactly than 16.79 in our CAS. Okay, so let's take that 16.79. Press enter to copy that down to the next line. Let's now divide that by tan of 35. Control enter. Okay, so that's about 23.97. So that's the total length along the bottom of the green triangle. And so therefore x will be that, 23.97 minus 18. So again, in my calculator, just typing, just pressing minus will immediately subtract from the previous answer. So taking that previous answer and subtracting 18 from that, two decimal places, 5.97 metres for the value of x, which is the answer to the question. So there's some using trig to find side lengths. Um, you've got some work to do there from exercise 4a.